All right, so we are going to start in the next unit in unit three. Oh, and you'll see I called everything unit 3A. Unit three is supposed to be quadratic. Oh, go ahead and take the EBITDA. It's supposed to be quadratics and polynomials. And I just decided it was too large of a unit with everything together. So I split it. And so there's going to be a 3A and a 3B to kind of make it a little bit more manageable. So it's not so much information at once. Um, so unit 3A that we're going to do here is all on quadratics. So today we're going to do standard form and vertex form. So standard form looks like this. You'll have f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So you have something x squared plus something with an x and then a regular old number. And here, I'll sit so that I'm not in your guys' line of sight here. So then vertex form is in a format where you can see what the vertex is, or sometimes it's called transformational form because you can see what the transformations are. Now, this is going to look like the alphabet threw up on your paper for a second. So just write it down and then I'll explain what everything means. You have that A value out front. It's X minus H squared plus K. So you would have that number out front. That would be your vertical stretch or shrink. The H value would be your left or right, and then the K value would be the up or the down, okay? Those will all be numbers when you actually have a problem, but it'll look like this. Like, say you have your parabola right here. This point, that vertex, is the point H comma K. So that's your vertex, and that's an important word. That center point, the word for that is vertex would be h comma k, whatever those numbers are, h comma k. And then do you remember we talked a lot about symmetry, even functions and odd functions, symmetric and all that? If you draw a line straight down the middle of a parabola, it cuts it exactly in half. That is called the axis of symmetry. And is it a vertical line or a horizontal line? Vertical, so remember hoi vux, would it be an x equals or a y equals for that equal vertical? X equals. So it'll be x equals whatever that h number is. So looking at this first one, what directions did that shift? Yeah, left eight down three. So your vertex would be negative eight, negative three. It went left eight down three. Um, Anyway, that's your vertex form. So we're gonna practice writing them in both formats. So these are right now in vertex form. We're gonna put them in standard form. Here's the pep talk. This is just a bunch of algebra. It's a little annoying. People get annoyed with it because it's a bunch of steps, but can you all multiply? Yes, I believe in you. If you know your multiplication tables, you're gonna be just fine. You just can't be scared of doing a little bit of writing because it's gonna be a little bit of writing, okay? So we got our f of x equals. When you see x minus eight squared, you're gonna have to write it twice. The square, oh, sorry, it was plus eight, x plus eight. You have to write it twice. Squared means there's two of them, it's a twin. Go ahead and close your paper. So write it twice and then you got that minus three at the end. Then we're just going to distribute everything to each other, ready? I'll talk you through the first one. x times x x squared, perfect. Now I always do the outsides and insides together because they're gonna combine. Just watch me point to it or you can draw in these little rainbows. The outsides give you eight x, the insides give you eight x. So eight x and eight x together would be 16 x, good. And then eight times eight is 64 minus three. And then your last step is to combine those like terms. I'm going to rewrite the whole thing, but if you wanted to just erase and fix it, if you don't want to rewrite the whole thing all over again, um, that's totally fine. This would be plus 61. And that's your answer. So yeah, it's a little bit of writing. You have to distribute stuff, um, but that's all that there is to it. We did things like that in unit one. Do you remember the clue game where you went around the room? Do you remember the one where you'd write it twice and distribute everything? Like that. All right, let's try it again. F of X equals. So this one has a two out front. That's okay, we'll get to that. You wanna write the X minus four twice because it's a twin. 
if you eventually, because I usually get asked this, hey, Ms. Cole, what if I can do it in my head? If you get to the point where you can skip that step, you don't have to write it twice, I, I will take that. However, strongly caution against it. Um, if you mess up something as easy as multiplying four times four, you're going to be upset. So, you know, I, I recommend against it. All right, so we got two. And then in those parentheses there, we're going to distribute all that stuff together. So x times x is x squared. The outsides are minus 4x and the insides are minus 4x. So what would that be together? Minus 4 and minus 4. Money. Think of money. You owe someone $4. Now you owe them another $4. So negative eight, negative eight X. That feels like that didn't go over very well. So let's pause there and do another example. Let's say you had negative three and negative three. Together, that would be negative six. Okay, good, that went better. All right, and then negative four times negative four is positive 16. And then minus seven. All right, now what? What's our next thing? You distribute. You're going to distribute the two to everything in the parentheses. So that's going to be 2x squared minus 16x plus 32 minus 7. And if you want to just go ahead and do 32 minus 7 and like erase it and fix that so you don't have to write the whole thing again, bless you. That's totally fine. I'm just going to write it because I'm doing the problem in front of everybody. So 32 minus 7. 25, good. Count on your fingers if you need to. That's why you got them. All right, we're just going to try that one more time. It's more about staying organized than anything else, to be honest. My Algebra 1 students get that talk all the time. I'm like, it's about staying organized, all right? So that negative 3 is just going to be there. You're going to write x minus 1 twice because it's a twin. Squared means there's two of them. And then we're going to distribute everything to each other. So the negative three is going to just sit there. Inside those parentheses, what are we going to have? I talked you through two of them. So you guys tell me, what's the next, this one going to be? All right, x squared. Good. You have a minus one x and a minus one x. So together, negative two x. And then good, negatives cancel, so plus one. And then plus five, packed on at the end. All right, then what? Negative three is going to be distributed. Good. All right, so negative three x squared plus six x minus three plus five. And again, if you want to do the negative three plus five in your head and just erase it and fix or if you're writing with pen, you can scribble it out and fix it. Or you can write the whole thing all over again. Um, it'll be plus two. Now, what I usually get asked at this point is, do I have to write that f of x equals on every single line? Here's my answer to that. As long as it's in your answer, I'll give you credit. So if you don't want to write it on every single line, but you want to put it, like, I need it somewhere in your answer. Here's what I'll say about that, though. If you're like, oh, I'll just put it in my answer. But if you don't write it here and you don't write it here and you don't write it here, how likely are you to remember to put it in your answer? Not very likely. So I say write it every time. It's literally an F of X. You'll be OK. All right. So that's that's my two cents. But as long as it's in your answer, I will mark it correct. All right. So that's going from vertex form to standard form. Now, going backwards the other way, there's a little bit more to it. This is just distributing a bunch of stuff. We're going to do this by factoring. And so what I'm going to do is pause the recording and with your group, and the reason you're in groups is so you can work together. I got this. What did you get? I want you to try and factor these three uh, trinomials. Okay, so I'm going to hit pause and I want you guys to try and do that. All right, so for number four, and you would draw your two sets of parentheses, x squared would be x and x. How did you split up 16? Four and four. And then to get eight in the middle, they're both plus. So how can you rewrite that? Because there is one more step to that. Good. And you need to write it that way. Ms. Cole, do I need to write it that way? Yes. You have to write it as whatever squared. They're all going to turn out that way. 
So how about this one? What did that split into? Somebody else. So like you worked with your group, right? Yeah, good. They're both x minus six. It's a twin. So x minus six squared. And then this one will be x and x, 25, 5 and 5. Good. And they're both negative to get negative 10. So x minus 5 squared. I'm going to pause again. What I want you to do for these, and there's two things I want you to do. That's why there's space here. Figure out what number needs to go on that blank to force it to be a twin. And then I want you to write it as something squared. And what you want to start to try to do is make the leap straight to the answer and skip this part where you write it twice. Like you want to jump straight to the whatever squared. So you're figuring out what number goes on that line and then try to write it as something squared. I'm going to hit pause. All right. What did you put for seven? What did you put on the line? Nine is correct. And in the parentheses, you're going to have x either plus a number or minus a number. What would you put in your parentheses? Plus three. Good. Nice. All right. How about this one? It is 49. And then in your parentheses, you would have either have x plus a number or x minus a number. So this would be x minus seven. Perfect. And then this last one's kind of tricky. I saw some of you got it, though. It is one. People tend to forget about one, but one times one is one. Um, and what's going to go in your parentheses? Yeah, X minus one. So what do you notice about, I'm going to circle these with another color, all of these numbers? There's two things I want you to notice about them. They're all what? They're all perfect squares, and they're also all positive. That's because when you square something, it is always positive. What we just did is called completing the square. Did you do that in algebra two? I think you do. Does completing the square sound familiar? I just tricked you into completing the square. You've all done it. That is completing, is figuring out what goes on that blank is completing the square. So let's back up and figure out how you actually got those numbers. How did you get from the six to the nine or from the 14 to the 49? Like, what did you do? You have to take the middle number and do what? Divide by two? and square. So that's what our directions are. Divide by two and square. So, and I thought you did. You do this in algebra two. We're just going to do some more complicated problems than you did in algebra two, but it's the exact same process. Divide by two and square. Um, so we'll do a couple of these and then we'll do our halfway through break. So looking at this first one, you're going to recopy the first two terms, the x squared plus four x, leave a gap before your equal sign. And we want to move that eight to the other side. And you would do that by adding or subtracting. You would subtract over the eight. So when it goes to the other side, it's minus eight. And I'm going to use a different color for this. I'll use pink because I think that shows up the best. What number goes there to complete the square? Do the exact same thing you did with seven, eight, and nine. What has to go there? So four divided by two is two and then squared is four is kind of weird because it's four but if you add four to the left side you also have to add four to the right side so whatever you do to the left you have to do to the right so plus four plus four and then here's your answer you need to write it as something squared what would go in the blank there i'll give you a hint there's an x x plus two good squared equals, and then you just evaluate what you have on the other side. Negative eight plus four is negative four. And that's your answer. We're going to take that a step further next class, but for right now, that's all I want you to do. Okay. So for this one, copy down the first two terms, leave a gap. And then what would go on the other side of the equal sign? Yep. Good. You're subtracting the one over. And then here, I'll do this with a different color. This is the completion of the squares, figuring out what number you need to add. And I think the first part of your delta math is just what's that number? And you just type in that number. Um, so what are we gonna need to add here? Nine, six divided by two is three and then three squared 
is nine. So you're going to add nine to both sides. The whole point of that is it forces it to be a twin. So it's something squared. What's the something? What's going to go in those parentheses? Good. X plus three equals, and then on the other side, you just evaluate that. It's just whatever. That would be eight. All I want is your attention. Just watch. I'm just going to make up another one real quick. All right, I'm gonna copy down the first two terms, leave a gap, it would be equals what on the other side? Negative three, you're subtracting the three over. I just made this up as another example. All I want you to do is watch. All right, what are we gonna add to both sides? And it'll always be addition. When you square something, it's positive. So this will be plus what? All I want is your attention. Good, how'd you get 81? Nine squared. 18 divided by two is nine squared is 81. So what would go in your parentheses? Blank squared, X plus nine, good. And then on the other side, you just evaluate that. So 81 minus three would be 78. <laughs> Friggin' had to think about that for a second. Yeah, that's it. All right, so you know how I said we're gonna do some slightly more complicated ones than you did in algebra two? We're gonna do ones that involve fractions. You're gonna be okay. You divide by two. So the fraction you start out with is gonna be halves. Then you square it. Hey guys, what's two squared? Four. The other fraction you deal with is gonna be fourths. So yes, there will be fractions, but they will all be either halves or fourths. If you get anything that is not a halves or a fourths, you have done goofed. If you lose your mind, make up something with halves and fourths, got it? What they're gonna be. So yes, there are gonna be fractions, but you're gonna be okay. All right, so we're gonna copy down the first two terms, leave a gap, it's the same process, just gonna have yuckier numbers in it. Uh, what's gonna be on the other side? Negative three, good, all right, we're on our way. Now, I always write this off to the side. If you're like, no, I can do it in my head, fine. I mean, I guess I can't force you, but I always write it off to the side. Our middle number is seven. So just as a like margin problem, like note to self, I'm gonna put seven. I'm going to divide it by two. So I put that over two and then I'm going to square it. I just always write that off to the side. It's like a mental note. Okay, I'm just going to take that and square it. When you square a fraction, you just square the numerator and square the denominator. That's all that it is. So, hey guys, what's seven squared? 49 and two squared is four. So what I'm going to add here is 49 fourths. A fraction is just two numbers instead of one number. You just have a numerator and a, and a denominator. It's nothing to worry about, okay? So when you go to write this, it's going to be something squared. We know that there's going to be an x, either plus or minus something. Will this be a plus or a minus? Yeah, plus. The symbol always just matches whatever's there. So plus, and it will be the number you wrote off to the side. So seven halves. It will just be that number. If you write it off to the side, it'll be that number. Now we have to evaluate this. You need a common, I've talked you through a bunch of these, and it's gonna be fourths, it will be fourths. So how many fourths is negative three? So it only it'll be negative 12, yep, I knew what you meant. And so then you just have to put those together. So you have a third step where you have to recopy the thing, you'll be okay. So x plus seven halves squared equals, and if you add those together, uh, negative 12 plus 49 would be 37. So 37 fourths. Did you do ones that had fractions last year? No, okay, so that's the difference between algebra two and pre-calc. So you've done all of this except for the ones with fractions. Halves and fourths, guys, halves and fourths. Let's try it again. Copy the first two. Leave a gap, what will go on the other side? You might be on a different problem. Negative two, although that bothers you guys way more than me. If you're awake and talking to me, I'm thrilled, especially last blog. All right, so off to the side, you're gonna take this middle number. Now it's a negative three. 
I don't usually worry about the fact that it's negative because when you square something, it's going to be positive anyway. Like if you square something, it's going to be positive. So you can write the negative if you want to. It's really not that important. But you're going to take three, divide it by two, and square it. So just write that off to the side. You take that number, divide it by two, and square it. Square the numerator, square the denominator. What do you get? Nine fourths plus nine fourths plus nine fourths. And so then you're going to have blank squared. Write it blank and then just go back and fill it in. And so what goes in there? Well, you have x plus or minus. Minus, it's just going to match. And it will be the number you wrote off to the side, 3 halves. Like if you just write it there, it's right there waiting for you. Equals, you need a common denominator, which is going to be fourths. It should not be anything other than fourths. If you have something other than fourths, I don't know what happened. Like you go back and figure out what happened, all right? How many fourths is negative two? Negative eight. And then you have one more step where you've got to rewrite that. So it'll be X minus three halves squared equals how many fourths? One fourth, good. Halves and fourths. And then we'll have to see if you did ones like these last year. I'll go through one of them. Again, we're doing the more complicated problems. Um, don't be nervous that the numbers look big. You're gonna be okay. The difference when you have something in front of the X squared is you're gonna factor it out. But I'm gonna stand up because this is important. You're only gonna factor it out from the first two terms. Let me say it again. Only from the first two terms. We don't really care what the last number is anyway, because we're going to shove that to the other side. OK, so put three, start your parentheses. I'm going to cover this up. GCF, what do you get when you factor a three out of both of those terms? You're dividing by three. X squared, Good. we can get the first one, right? X squared plus. And then 54 divided by three, is that 18? Yes. All right, it's 18 X. Leave a gap and then equals, the reason we didn't mess with that 241 anyway is because we're shoving it to the other side. What's it gonna be when we move it to the other side? Negative 241. Divide by two and square. What is 18 divided by two gonna give you? Nine squared, 81. Now here's where this is a little tricky and this is the step that always gets everybody. We didn't really add an 81. We added a three times 81. Do you see what I'm saying? Three times 81. So what would be three times 81? Well, what's three times eight? 24. So 243, three times one would be three. So 243 is what gets added to the other side. Do you see why I made it a negative 241? I usually do that on purpose. So, so like if your numbers come out close, you're like, oh, that's how Ms. Cole made it. So it'll like come out, right? All right, and then here's your final answer. You got three times something squared, just leave it blank. And then what will go in the blank? It'll be X plus a number or X minus a number. Yeah, plus x plus nine squared equals, and then you have negative 241 plus 243, which would be two. That's your answer. If you were like, hey, I didn't quite get that. We're gonna do one more, all right? And then we're gonna do a couple of graphs. So you're gonna need to factor out two. Oh, but only the first two, okay? Because we don't care what that last number is anyway. So factor out two, what's left when you divide by two? X squared, good, minus 14X. Leave a gap, and that minus one goes to the other side, so it'll actually be a positive one. You're adding the one over. All right, what's gonna go in the blank? This is completing the square. You're gonna take the 14, divide by two, seven and square it, 49. And here's the tricky part. We didn't actually add a 49. We added a two times 49, 
which yes is 98. So 98 is what has to go over there. And so your final answer, it's two times blank squared. Write it blank. Like write it blank and then go back and fill it in. It should be an X plus a number or X minus a number. This one will be X, good, minus seven equals 99. All right, so when we go to graph these, you want to put it into vertex form by completing the square. That's what we just did. Um, do your graph, and we're just going to do the vertex and axis of symmetry. So not doing the whole list of characteristics. We're just going to do those two things. So I want to see an f of x equals, at least in your answer. But if you think you'll forget to write it in the answer, write it on every step. Leave the first two terms alone. And I'll use my pink pen here. Divide by 2 and square. 6 divided by 2 is 3 squared 9. So plus 9. And here's what I always say is give that a hug. Like put parentheses around that. Now, in all the previous ones, we adjusted it by moving something to the other side of the equal sign. Here, we don't have that. I just usually have everybody adjust it back to what it was, and it goes over well. You're not allowed to, believe it or not, just go around changing the problem. You're not allowed to change an 8 to a 9. Sorry about that. So how do you turn the 9 back into an 8 like it was supposed to be? What do I tack on at the end here? Yeah, 9 minus 1 is 8. So like you have to fix it. So that it's still, like you have to maintain the integrity of the problem. You can't just go around changing stuff, believe it or not. I have had people try to do that on a test though. They'll have a problem they don't like and scribble it out and change it into something they want it to be. And I'm like, nice try. So it's gonna be blank squared minus one. And what goes in the blank will be X plus something or X minus something. What will this one be? X plus three, uh, and that's it. I'm not gonna be super picky about these graphs. If the center point is correct, I'm gonna let it go for the sake of time here. How did this shift? Down one and left three. So go down one, left three, that's your center point. And it should be a parabola. Oh, does it face up or does it face down? Up, why up? There's no negative. Again, we've been doing this with more points, but for the sake of time today, that's not what this lesson is on. This lesson is on, can you find the vertex, okay? So what is that vertex point? Well, we just plotted it. It's, yeah, negative three, negative one. And your axis of symmetry, you don't have to dot it in. I'm just doing that to show you. It's a vertical line, hoi vux. So is it X equals or Y equals? X equals negative three. Hey, will these always match? Yes, the center. We're just going to try that two more times. All right, now this one does have a negative. That's going to involve an extra step. You have to factor out a negative one, but only from the first two. You only ever factor from the first two. We don't really care what the third number is. We're going to adjust for it anyway. All right, so let me just cover it up. It's like it's gone. If you divide out a negative one, what do you have? It's good. Everything's just going to flip its sign, right? So what would you have there? Good. X squared minus 8X. Perfect. And then complete the square. You're going to divide by 2 and square. So what is 8 divided by 2? 4. Good. 4 squared, 16. Now hold on. We didn't actually add 16. We actually did a negative 16. Are you with me there? How do you turn a negative 16 back into a negative 12? You would have to add four. It was like this one. We had to turn a nine back into an eight. So we had to subtract one. You have to turn a negative 16 back into a negative 12. So you have to add four. It does involve some number sets, right? So this will be negative one, blank squared plus four, just leave it blank. I sometimes call that like the skeleton of the problem. Like write it out blank and then just go back and fill it in. What goes in that gap is X plus a number or X minus a number. So what's gonna go in there? Yeah, X minus four, cool. And then we can graph it. 
And I'm not going to be picky about these graphs because that's not what this lesson is on. This lesson is on, can you find the center? So how did this one shift? Yeah, right four, up four. So weirdly, it's at four, four. So you kind of can't get those backwards. And does it face upwards or downwards? Yep, down. And it's down because of what? The negative. So your vertex is four, four, and your axis of symmetry is x equals four. It's nice when they're the same number, you can't mess it up. All right, we'll just try one more. This one has a two in front, guys. We're gonna factor that out, but only from the first two. The stuff that people tend to miss a lot is the things I try to say over and over and over and over again. I'm not trying to be hateful or annoying. I just want you to get the answer right. Okay. So I'm gonna cover up the 19. If you divide out two, what's left? X squared, good, minus six X, perfect. And then you divide by two and square. Six divided by two, is three, three squared is nine. But hold on, because it's not really a nine, it's really a two times nine, it's really 18. How do you turn an 18 back into a 19 plus one? All right, and so your final answer there will be two times blank squared plus one like the skeleton or like the framework of the problem. Then go back and fill it in. What's gonna go in the blank that we left? Yep, X minus three, that's your vertex form. And now you can see how it shifted. Do, like, can I, do you guys see why we're doing this? If I asked you to graph this, how would you even go about doing that? Do you guys get what I'm saying? How would you even do that? So if you just do these quick two quick steps, how did it shift? Right three, up one, does it face up or down? Up, boom, there's your graph. Do you see how fast and easy it is if you know the trans? Like, are you understanding the why behind? All right, so what's the vertex? Three, one, and then X equals three. 